हेलो आम कृष्ण गोपाल मिश्रा प्रेजेंट ऑफ फिजिक्स एच ओ डी फिजिक्स एंड एग्जामिनेशन डिपार्टमेंट इन चार्ज एंड सेंट जॉन स्कूल आवर रोड डिस्ट्रिक्ट सरोही राजस्थान I have completed my plus two from Kendriya Vidyalaya, situated in, inside the campus of IIT Kharagpur. After my BSc in Mathematics from Allahabad University, and then I went to Chhattisgarh, that is Raipur, and completed my MSc in Physics and BA from Pandit Ravi Shankar Sukla University. After that, I started at my teaching career, and I went to different uh, states. I have taught in different schools, boarding schools, and day schools. Some of them are MGM Senior Secondary School at Bilai, Chhattisgarh, and then Gyan Ganga International School at Jabalpur, DPS Varanasi in UP, then Lucent International School at Dehradun, and then I joined this institution in 2014. So today, that's all about my introduction. So now I'm going to start the topic: the capacitors of a parallel plate capacitor. so topic is capacitance of parallel plate capacitor as already we have discussed about the capacitance what the capacitance means uh, and we have also discussed that different types of capacitors are there So here we will finding the capacitance of a parallel plate. So for that I am going to draw those uh, parallel plate capacitor here. There are two plates. There are these are two plates. One is positively charged. Having surface charge is P plus sigma. Another has got the negative charge. Having surface charge is P minus sigma. The area of the plates is A. Both are having the same area, and the separation between the plates is D. Now, in order to find the capacitance of the capacitor, we need to find the potential. In order to find the potential, we we need to find the electric field. In the region between the two plates. So let us consider a point where we will finding the electric field anywhere between the plates. So let us see. We 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 choose a point here. I choose a point here, point P. Anywhere in between the plates. Now we have to recall the result which we derived during the application of Gauss law. The uh, the application that was the electric field due to infinite charge sheet. We got that expression for electric field something sigma by two epsilon. So here the electric field due to this positively charged sheet at point P will be let it be E one. It is equal to sigma by two epsilon. In the same way, the electric field due to this negatively charged sheet at point P will be let it be E two, and it will be how much? It is again sigma by two epsilon. Now we have to check the direction. So, as per the convention, what we do to check the direction, we use to place a unit positive charge, which is test charge, at that point. That is point of observation. So, when we will place a point positive charge, test charge at point P, what we will find this positively charged sheet used to repel that charge away from it. So, the direction of electric field E one will be this one. And again, the This charge is placed at point P. It is positive charge, the same charge, and this negatively negatively charged sheet will attract it towards it. So the direction of electric field E two will be it will again directed in the same direction. Now, as we know, electric field is a vector quantity, and when vector quantities are directed along the same direction, then we simply add them. So here also the net field we will get by simply adding these. Two electric fields, and that is E net or net electric field E is equal to it is E one plus E two. So we will get what we will get sigma upon two epsilon naught plus sigma upon two epsilon naught 
that is equals to e and then we will get e is equals to that is 2 sigma upon 2 epsilon naught so 2 to get cancel out we will have e is equals to sigma by epsilon naught so finally let mark it question number 1 finally we got the expression for electric field at any point between the two charge plates next thing we have to do we have to find the potential in order to find the potential difference between the plates what we have to do we have to use the relation between electric field and potential so what that relation is actually the relation is E is equals to minus dV upon d naught. for here we can write this like this E is equals to V that is potential difference between the plates and instead of dr what we will doing we will taking the distance that is distance between the plates that is d so e is equals to v by d or if you want to find out v then what we will get d into e this is our equation number 2 so now we will substituting the value of e from equation 1 in equation 2 let's see what we get sigma epsilon naught d is supposed to be so we got the potential now after this we are supposed to find the capacitance as per the definition of capacitance we know that it is given by c is equals q is equals to cv so from here c is equals to q upon v this is let it is equation number 3 and this equation number 4. Now we will substituting the value of potential difference from equation 3 in equation 4. Let's see what we get. So we will get Q epsilon naught upon sigma d and this goes to C. That's what we have got. We have got Q epsilon naught sigma d. Again, we know that, but what is sigma? Sigma is charge upon the area of the plate because it is surface charge density. And we know that surface charge density is nothing but it is the charge per unit area. So, we will substitute this value over here and then we will get C is equal to Q epsilon naught Q upon A into D. So, this QQ will cancel out and finally we will get C is equal to epsilon naught A upon D. And this is the expression for capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor. But we find here a term appearing epsilon naught. What this epsilon naught tells, what it is actually, it is nothing but permittivity of free space. The question comes, what this permittivity is actually? It is the property of a medium and it tells how the amount of interaction it allows between the two charges through it. If they are supposed, there are two charges are placed in a certain medium, then the amount of interaction between them it allows is called its permittivity. So here, epsilon naught we have taken it is the permittivity of free space free space means it is air or vacuum for the free space its value is given by epsilon naught is equals to 8.85 into 10 is the power minus 12 it is uh, meter square per coulomb uh, per coulomb square newton so this is uh, value of permittivity of free space now suppose a certain medium has been placed other than this free space between the plates. So what we will find, we will find the capacitance changes. Let's see how this changes. Epsilon m, where epsilon m is the permittivity of that medium which has been placed between the plates. We also know while studying the Coulomb's law, we have studied that the relative permeability. What is the relative permeability? How it is given by? Let's see here. The permittivity of the medium upon permittivity of free space gives the relative permittivity of that medium. Or it is also known as dielectric constant capital K. So from here what we get? 
epsilon m is equals to epsilon naught into capital K. If we substitute this value over here, so what we will get? We will get see m is equals to epsilon naught a k upon d. This is the capacitance of a capacitor when any medium of dielectric constant K is introduced between the plates or any dielectric substance of dielectric constant K is introduced between the plates then the capacitance of the parallel plate capacitor will be this one if it has only air or vacuum between the plates then the capacitance of that capacitor will be obviously at the, this K will not be there, the PL over there we will get epsilon naught A upon D only so we can say that if we have some other medium between the plates, then the capacitance increases by its dielectric times. So now let us solve certain numericals based on this. So first question, which is generally asked in the examinations, that I'm going to discuss over here. The question is: We have got a parallel plate capacitor over here. This parallel plate capacitor is filled with dielectric slabs of equal area. So, as I told, the dielectric slabs are of equal area and they are placed in this between the plates, something like this. This is a capacitor, and these are placed like this. So, separation. So, separation between the plates is D, and also the thickness of slabs is also D. The area of the plates is A, but the area of these slabs is A upon to each. Now, the dielectric constant of first slab is K1, the second slab is K2. So, what will happen? See, generally, when we look through this question, it appears to be a complex question. But, it can be simplified it by taking its equivalent, that is, it appears to be like a two capacitors, two different capacitors, which are connected in parallel, like this, having plate area A upon 2, separation between the plates is D, and it has got a dielectric slab of constant K1, this guy has got a dielectric slab of constant K2. So we have to find their capacitance separately, and then as they are in parallel, so we have to find their equivalent capacitance. And let us find the capacitance of first one. Let its capacitance be C1. So what we can write, C1 will be equals to epsilon naught A by 2 upon D into its dielectric constant that is K1. So what we will get, we will get epsilon naught A K1 upon 2D and this is the capacitance of first capacitor. In the same way, the capacitance of second capacitor, what we will get? We will get C2 is equals to epsilon naught A and K2 upon 2D. The, all the things are going to be remain the same, only the dielectric constant changes, that's all. So we have got the capacitance of both the capacitors. Now these capacitors are connected in parallel. We know that when the capacitors are connected in parallel, so the equivalent capacitors will be just the sum of them. So here the equivalent capacitance C equivalent will be obviously C1 plus C2. So now we can substitute the value and add them. So epsilon naught A K1 upon 2D plus epsilon naught A K2 upon 2D. So what we will get? We can take epsilon naught A upon 2D as common. So what we will get? epsilon naught A upon 2D as common, we have got K1 plus K2. So this is the capacitance of this capacitor. This is the solution we have got. So, next, this next question, 